Hello, my name is Sai, and today I'll be showing you how to use my Blob Tracker Fuse plugin for DaVinci Resolve. This will work on the free version and the paid version of DaVinci Resolve. Right here, I have this footage of this eyeball, and I'm going to create a Blob Tracker effect on the blue part of the eye. So I'll type in BTR, you'll find SC Blob Tracker. And once you add this in, it, by default, it'll have all of the elements or graphic elements drawn in except for the positioning labels and you can toggle between each of these using the checkbox controls over here right now i'm just going to turn on the centers and the boxes and we can play this back you can see that the blobs are being tracked onto the every part of the image based on this threshold mask by default it'll use the threshold mask but you can also use a color keyer so i'm going to use this color keyer and select this area of the eye if you want a bigger sample of the selection that you're making with the key color you can hold the eyedropper and then hold control and then create a sample space and it'll sample every single color inside this sample space and then average it out so we can collect more of this blue color here so in this eye right here there's a little bit of blue color um, if we look at the color values on the bottom left but what we can do to make sure this isn't captured in the image we can go to the key tolerance and lower this value a little bit so it has a stricter um, range of, of the colors we can also go to the view mask here and increase the softness if we'd like to, but for now I'm just going to keep it at the default setting. We can also downscale the image to increase performance and the tracking performance. If we go back to the regular threshold control, we have a blur for the mask and also a downscale control as well. For the thresholding effect, it goes the blur and then it thresholds the image and then it downscales the image. Uh, for the Color keyer, it just does the color keyer, then the tolerance, softness, and then the image downscale. So I'm gonna go back to using the color keyer so it stays on only the blue parts of the eye. If we go over to the blob detection area over here, the minimum blob area and the max blobs. So the max blobs are the maximum amount of blobs that are allowed to spawn in within the uh, image. So if there's blobs being tracked anywhere, it'll increase that amount. So by default, this subdivide large blob setting will be on. So if there's, if you have this set to like 200 or something like that, it's not going to show every single blob because there's only a certain amount of blobs that can fit within this range of the mask. And what we can do is enable this subdivide large blobs. And what it'll do is basically create new points that don't exist within the same blob sort of, and it only renders out the center position position. So this is really good for having a lot of different center images um, and other effects. So I'm just going to go back to, let's say 16 here, and I'm going to turn the boxes back on. Then the minimum blob area. So this is uh, for filtering out bad tracked blobs. So if we have a bunch of unstable blobs and I want more consistent blobs within the image, I would turn up this. So we have more consistently tracked blobs within the image. So over here, we also have the box render tolerance. So I'm going to go back to the threshold masking system just to show this off, uh, since it captures uh, bigger blobs and bigger um, pixels within the image here. So we're going to go over to the box render tolerance. So you see how we have these, these like really big, large boxes. Let's say I don't want those boxes and I just want some smaller boxes. So we just turn up this box render tolerance until these boxes disappear. And now we only have uh, the smaller boxes within the image. And then the line distance threshold works with the line line graphics here. So if a line is reaching or going over a certain value in terms of uh, distance between each points, it will disappear. So if we lower this, these longer lines that stretch over a longer distance will not render anymore. This is good for controlling the amount of lines that you have within your graphic. I'm going to go back to the color here and then we'll go over to the line styles. So moving on to the line styles, we have a bunch of different graphic effects here. So we have three different types of lines. So the first one, chain, it just moves left to right and connects a line between each point moving left to right. And then star, this one connects to the leftmost blob and connects all of the lines to the leftmost blob, creating a sort of like star-like effect. And then full creates one line between each and every point. So we can see here, there's one blob here that connects to this blob here, and then this blob here connects to this blob here. Every single line is connected. And this is the main reason why I made the line distance threshold 
uh, because when there's a lot of lines, it can look very, very cluttered here. So we can decrease this to make uh, like a more isolated line effect here. And then there's also dotted line styles. So these are the line patterns for the different graphic overlay. So we have dotted and we also have dot spacing. So we can adjust the spacing between each dot. And then dashed, we have dashed length and dashed spacing as well to change the effect. And then we also have line thickness to adjust the thickness of our lines. And then we, over here, we have a different type of geometry for the lines where we can change from straight lines to curved lines. And we can change this uh, curvature here. We can also keyframe this if you'd like to. If you turn it up uh, higher than the uh, slider value, we can create some really cool looking line effects with that. I'm just going to keep it on the default value. And moving on to the centers and boxes here, we have the different center marker styles. So I'm just going to disable everything except for the center markers. And we're going to shrink the blobs a little bit here so you can see them a little bit better. And then right here, we have the cross, the X, which is just the cross rotated at a 45 degree angle. And then we have the brackets, which are like little kind of similar to the bounding boxes, but it's only the edges of the image and they kind of look similar to the brackets on the keyboard. Um, and then we have circles, like dots filled and outlines of the circles as well. And then we also have a custom image input, which defaults to the cross if there's no green input on the node here. So I'm going to go over here. I'm just going to grab this image of Bochi and we're just going to plug that into the green input here. And now it's very, very small, but we can go over to the center marker size and increase this value. And now we have a bunch of images of Bochi tracked to our eyeball here. There's a lot of different effects that you can do with just using these center custom markers. So I'll show that off in a little bit here. And we also have on the view boxes, we also have the thickness of the boxes. And then we also have the center marker thickness. And we also have center marker variation, which varies the thickness and the size of the center position markers. And then we also have the overlay colors. So this is just change. If you want to change the colors of each overlay, you can also control the alpha. And yeah, then you also have the label controls. So we turn off all these other viewer things. Uh, well, let's turn on the boxes here because the way these labels work is they are based around the box, the bounding boxes. I'm going to turn down this max blob count to eight just so we can see these a little bit easier. But as you can see, they're placed below the boxes and we can go to the label padding and increase the distance between the boxes and the labels. We can also change the size of the text for the labels and we can adjust the color of the text. Uh, there's also a little backdrop between the text and the image to be able to see the text better. We can just decrease and increase this alpha here. Oh yeah, this looks pretty good right now, but I'm going to show you some other things you can do with this effect. So in the promo video that I made, I made an effect where it displaces the image and zooms in the, the image based on the tracked and blobs. But you can't natively do that within this few scripts, so I'm going to show you how you do that with uh, with what I created. So we have the removed background button here. We can remove the background, and we'll add the view centers, and then we'll go to the stylization, go to the centers and boxes, set it to a custom image, and we'll just input a rectangle mask into here. So we can control this. I'm going to make like a square here. I'm just going to do something like this, and then go to the resolution and connect these two together. I guess we can just make these 0.5 and 0.5. And we'll just increase this and then increase this variation as well. So we have a little bit of varying sizes. We can also bump this up to a larger size, something like that. I'm also going to sharp the color key here because then it'll only be in the area of the eye here. We can also just, while we're doing this, we can visualize where this will be placed by uh, re-enabling the background. Let's do something like this. We'll turn up the blobs a little bit to like 32. And then increase this size just a little bit more. And increase this variation a little bit. See how it looks pretty good. And then we'll remove that background again. And we'll add a XF transform node. Then plug the effect mask, or plug the blob tracker into the effect mask of the transform. And we can just zoom in. And I'll create this weird little zoomed effect. We can also invert the color of the image based on these blob tracker points. So we'll just plug this into here and plug it into the effect mask. You can really do this with any any effect that takes an effect mask. And 
you can just mask whatever effect that you want using this. So let's say I want to use a color corrector and change the color of the image. Plug that into the effect mask and turn it to like red or something like that. Like boost the saturation or real boost the contrast. Something like that. And let's say you want your original blob tracker overlay on top of this here. So we can actually grab this, control shift V and create an instance of it. And it will remove the, we'll de-instance the viewer controls. So we'll de-instance this. So we have boxes on and we'll de-instance the position labels and de-instance the lines. So we have all of our graphic overlays and we'll just merge it back to our footage here. And then we can go to the marker size and we'll de-instance that as well. So it'll have the same exact tracker points as the original version, but we'll keep all of the graphic overlays and also the controls. But make sure when you're changing the controls, I forgot to de-instance the center marker size, so um, it's a little messed up here. But yeah, you just have to make sure you de-instance the controls and you can also you can just have these different kinds of masking effects going on using the controls and the remove background elements. You can also do different kinds of displacement. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this rectangle and I'm going to grab a background node and I'm going to set the resolution to the same. Yeah, really 512 by 512. And we'll add a custom tool node. I'm going to create a ST map or a normal map. X into the red channel, Y into the green channel, zero into the blue channel, and one into the alpha channel. I'll plug this into the green input of SE blob tracker. So now we have these normal maps that we can use to displace the image by. So instead of the transform, I'm going to use a displace node. Okay, so I'll put the X channel at red since that's what we did here. And then we'll displace this. You can displace it by the red channel on the X axis. And you can also displace the Y refraction with the green channel, or you can change it to the X and you can create some weird skewing effects. But yeah, that's about it. If you have any questions about how to use this, if there's any bugs you have or anything like that, this is my first time making a fuse like this. So if you have any problems, just let me know. You can contact me on my Discord, which will be linked on my PayHub, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below. All right, thank you for watching.